Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Courtney. And I'm Riley. And we are on our 20 acre off-grid homestead in North Idaho. It's been a few months since we installed this off-grid system and we want to take the opportunity to talk to you guys about all of your most asked questions. Today we're going to cover why we did what we did, how much it cost, and would we do it again? Our system is about 60 kW of lithium batteries, 10 kW of solar, and 20 kW of total inverter output. So I think we're just going to walk through the system in the order that we did the install and that means that we are going to start with our shipping container. I did not choose the right shoes for this. Coming down over here. The first question that we've gotten a lot is why did we choose to use a shipping container? And so for us, the building season up here in North Idaho is so short. There are so many projects that we wanted to get done this summer, and we didn't want to dedicate a whole month into building a shed or a structure to house everything. So by using the shipping container, it meant that in one day we could have it delivered, in another day we could do the excavation, and by the third day it was in place. The second question we got was why did we bury it? <laughs> Honestly, I think it was kind of just an idea that snowballed one night when we were talking about it, but we liked the idea that maybe we could get some geothermal properties from the hillside by doing that. So we're hoping that by burying our container into the hillside in winter, the warmth from the ground will keep the container warmer. And hopefully by keeping the container a little bit warmer and insulating it, it will prevent our batteries from getting too cold because if they get too cold in winter, they won't charge. We don't know if this is gonna work. It seemed like a good idea, but we'll make sure to let you know how it actually works out. We also liked that it kind of hides it and sinks it down in, makes it a little bit lower profile so that it's not this giant thing on the hill. And also we just thought it would be fun. So to save some money, we did purchase a used shipping container. So we spent $3,900 for a 20 foot shipping container delivered to our property. Well, kind of delivered. But he decided he doesn't want to bring the trailer um, any further. So I think we're gonna unload our shipping container in the middle of the road. We also spent $130 on paint, $42 on our waterproofing membrane that we painted on this back wall, and $38 on our perforated drain pipe. We also chose to build out the inside of the container to house all of our systems, and so that cost for framing, insulation, and studs was $650. So that means that the total cost for our basically our shell that houses our system is $4,764. So with the container installed, it was time to figure out the racking for the panels. I did a ton of research on some of the commercially available racking solutions and they were really expensive and had a long lead time. So we decided to take the project on ourselves and make our own racking. Another bonus of making our own racking system was that we could make it however we wanted. And I wanted to make a tilting array system that could maximize the solar panels. We have a summer tilt and a winter tilt. One of the big benefits of the winter tilt is it should allow these panels to shed snow more easily. Building the racking system on top of the container allowed us to use the container as the foundation system for the racking and eliminate some cost and some steps. Where we live is beautiful. And of course, covering up this entire hillside with solar equipment would kind of destroy the beauty. Building the solar racking system on top of the container allowed us to minimize the, uh, the footprint of the entire system so that it wouldn't take up this entire hill. It also allowed us to take advantage of the structure of the container as the foundation system for the racking and minimize some of the costs there. A bonus that I didn't even really think about is that the solar panels shade the container and help keep it cooler during the summertime. We've had a lot of questions about concerns with wind loading on this array and the way we installed this container. And I've had the same concerns. I've run some wind calcs and I'm not worried at all about wind from the south, but with a big enough windstorm from the north, we could have some damage. I think our plan is to add some heavy guy wires that anchor the container back into the hillside to keep it from being able to get blown off the hill. We spent $1,901 on the structural steel items for the racking, $593 on the cross rails, 58 bucks on some hinges and hardware, and finally $32 on the winch that makes the whole assembly tilt, which makes the Grand total for the racking that holds our solar panels, $2,829. We installed 24 of these solar panels from Santan Solar. They are 445 watt bifacial solar panels, which means that they actually capture light from the front and the back. We're really hoping that in winter, this helps absorb some heat and melt the snow off of the panels. The other thing that should really help shed the snow is our tilting array because we'll be able to get them in that really steep winter angle to again, get the snow to hopefully slide off of them because I don't really wanna to have to climb them up here to sweep them. This may seem like a huge solar array and for summer it is. It's not even noon and our batteries are almost at 100%. 
But living as far north as we do, we really needed to think about our system in winter because we have such limited daylight. So we're really hoping by having this large of an array in winter, even with our limited daylight and cloud cover, we're still able to capture enough energy to minimize the amount of time that we need to run a generator. Santan Solar is a solar wholesaler. We loved this because these panels are a killer deal right now. At $230 each, the total cost for 24 of these panels was $5,520. Now it's time to go check out the brains of the operation. All right, so here's the basic rundown of the system. We have 12 of these five kilowatt hour lithium batteries, which gets us a total usable battery storage capacity of 60 kilowatt hours. We have two 10,000 watt inverters that combine to get us a 240 volt split phase output. We also have two of these 100 amp charge controllers for the solar panels. So why do we have this giant system? So this system actually powers both our apartment and our future workshop. Coordinate's passion is in building stuff. We have lots of equipment, welders, power tools, and we wanted a system that was gonna be big enough to not limit our ability to make stuff. This system can not only power our full apartment, including air conditioning, but it can also power all of our welders and air compressors all at the same time. There are a lot of battery options out there and ultimately we decided to go with these SOK batteries from Current Connected. They're a great value, they're compact, they're serviceable, and Current Connected provides great customer service. One of the really cool things about these batteries and this Victron equipment is that it's all really scalable. We could have started with just one rack of batteries, one inverter, and one charge controller, and then easily added more on in the future. And the same thing goes if we find that this equipment isn't enough for our needs, we can continue adding more batteries, more inverters, and more charge controllers until we end up where we need to be. One of the most asked questions in the comments about this system was what we expect the lifespan to be. All of this stuff comes with a 10 year warranty, but we expect it to last at least 20 years, if not closer to 30. These batteries have a 4,000 cycle to 80% capacity, which means that if we drained them completely dead every single day for the next 10 years, they'd still have 80% of their usable capacity left. On a daily basis, we've only been using about 20% of these batteries capacity during the summertime, which means that we should expect to see 8,000 charge cycles before they got to that 80% capacity. These batteries should easily last us more than 20 years. So now it's time to talk about how much this all cost. The backbone of this entire system is the batteries. So the batteries, including the racking and all the cabling required to hook them up, cost $22,175. The two inverters cost $8,445. The solar charge controllers cost $2,592. And finally, the Victron link system, the servo communication system, and all of the cables we needed to make this all work right cost $1,815. And that brings us to the total for all of these components, which was $35,845. So with all of that, the total cost of our off-grid solar system installed. Drum roll. $50,000. That may seem like a lot of money because it is a lot of money, but there were a few factors that we took in consideration that made it the right choice for us. When we purchased this property, we knew that power was really far away. It's actually one of the reasons that we were able to afford to buy this property in the first place. So it felt like we were getting a good deal on the property, but what it really meant is that we weren't paying for power up front. So after we bought the property, we started getting pricing on what it would cost to bring power here. And the price that we got just to bring power onto our property was $60,000. That's a lot of money. And so that's when we started looking into what alternative solutions could we do. So not only was going off grid cheaper for us, it also made us more self-reliant. And we don't have a monthly power bill. I actually really like the idea of making our own power. We're not reliant on the utility. We don't have such a thing as power outages, you know, unless of course I cause them. And we get to make all of our own power right here on the property. It's not a way of life that I ever thought we would have lived, but now that we're living it, I don't know that I would want to go back to being reliant on the grid. I think that we're going to wrap up this video with the most asked question that we have gotten, which is how can we afford this system? And I think that that answer is a pretty unique answer for us, and it's because of you guys. All of this is possible because of your views, your likes, your comments, purchasing things through our affiliate links, and I hope that you know that we couldn't do any of this without you. So thank you so much for making this happen. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you next time. We've actually put together a spreadsheet detailing all of the costs of all of the components of this system and put it up on our website. So if you'd like to download that spreadsheet, head to the link in the description below.